You know, I've only seen that show once, but I gotta tell you, what's really weird to me is why is the voice of the guy from the future Bob Saget? He can be an ignorant jerk sometimes. Okay, most of the time. But then he'll drop a truth bomb that we can all relate to. Hey, do you have a Peter Griffin in your friend group or family? Maybe it's you. Let us know in the comments. Number 10, misleading studio logos. Just getting to the feature presentation can make sitting in a movie theater feel like a marathon. After a pre-film reel and like 20 minutes of trailers, is it time to finally get the movie started? Nope. Ah, good, it's starting. Yeah, that's what you say. I can never figure out when the hell the studio logos end and the actual movie begins. As Peter points out, just when it seems like the film is about to commence, you have to sit through several studio logos. Here we go, movie! Well, now that seems intentionally misleading. This doesn't sound too bad, but the logos possess such a cinematic quality that for a hot second, you might assume they're part of the film's narrative. Peter encapsulates all of our grievances as the logos set the mood for one thing, only to pull the rug out from under us. Oh, this guy's in trouble. Can't wait to hear his story. Oh, come on! This is why more and more people are streaming their movies at home. Number nine, winter coat mementos. Thanks again for coming, guys. It really means a lot to me. Of course, honey, we wouldn't miss it. Plus, it's a good excuse to put on my winter coat and find items from last year still in the pocket. Ooh, sticky pennies, a rock-hard starburst. Those who live in perpetually freezing temperatures might wear their heavy jackets for 12 straight months. For people outside of Canada, though, the winter coat usually goes back into the closet after about three months. Most people don't bother checking their pockets before putting their coats away, meaning they'll find a few surprises when the temperatures drop again. An unwrapped piece of dentine? A yarmulke from when that Jewish guy died? A breath mint from the now defunct Clorets Corporation? Printed out map quest directions to Dave and Busters? Some of the items that Peter finds in his pockets are bizarrely specific. However, we've all come across old items like loose change, stale candy, dental appointment cards, and movie ticket stubs. Depending on just how long it's been since you've bundled up, you might find printed out map quest directions like Peter. Even the most mundane form of nostalgia still fills us with such joy. Flintstone vitamin I didn't take because it was Barney, refrigerator magnet from local electrician who is now arrested, and balled up tissues with last year's flu on it. You done with your pocket bits? It's freezing. Number eight, time to drop the kids off at the pool? Boy, am I gonna enjoy this meal. Not like last night when I didn't have time to poop before the guests arrived. Most people wouldn't discuss it around the dinner table, but we can all identify with Peter's internal struggle. Guests are about to arrive when suddenly nature calls. If it's number one, you should be able to pop in and out of the bathroom with time to spare. If it's number two, you may have a problem. Is there enough time to do your business, clean up, and spray air freshener so nobody's the wiser? The longer you think about it, the less time you have. Do I have time? You know what? I'm gonna go for it. Son of a bitch! Looks like I'm gonna have to pile dinner on top of that. Hey, guys, how are ya? Peter is about to go for it when the dreaded doorbell rings, meaning he'll have to contain himself for the next few hours. What's worse, it's a dinner party. So, Peter must pile one meal on top of another. Everyone leave. I have to poop. Now! Become a Watch Mojo channel member and get exclusive perks like Mojo emojis, loyalty badges, priority comment replies, and exclusive members-only content, including live list rankings with the Mojo staff and peeks behind the scenes. Don't miss out. Number seven, what's the appeal of bowling alleys? Are you serious? Dad's gonna run the house? Hey, I can do it. I mean, it can't be any harder than that job I used to have at the bowling alley. Some only go to bowling alleys for special occasions like birthdays. For others, the bowling alley is part of a weekly ritual where you hang out with friends or maybe even play in a professional league. This cutaway joke ponders, why do people view the bowling alley as a fun habitat for socializing? Bowlerama. Yes, we're open. Oh yes, we have a wide selection of balls that are way too heavy or have too small finger holes. Uh, no, you will not be able to do anything with your wrist for seven days afterward. Working at the Bolarama, Peter lists off all the inconveniences that the bowling alley brings, such as the questionably designed balls, unclean arcade machines, noisy teenagers, and a complete disregard for the establishment's own no-smoking policy. Oh, absolutely. There is always a group of teenagers throwing the ball real hard and scaring everyone. No, there is no smoking, but we do let you smoke. Yes, it's all terrible. Come on down. Peter flat out calls it terrible, but he says it with such a chipper attitude. 
Bowling alleys shouldn't be appealing to us, but for some reason, they are. Number six, gay marriage. As Brian's cousin aspires to marry his boyfriend, Lois expresses reservations. Ricardo and I want to thank you for letting us have the wedding here. Oh, y you having the wedding here? Yeah, I hope that's okay, Lois. I offered them the house. Oh, uh, sure. N no problem. Lois doesn't hate gay people, but she fears jeopardizing the quote-unquote sanctity of marriage. Straight or gay, exactly how sacred is marriage? A lot of opposite sex and same-sex marriages end in divorce. Even the couples who stay together aren't always that happy. Lois knows deep down that she didn't hit the jackpot with Peter, but her husband does impart wisdom in this instance. But the idea of two men actually getting married, it just doesn't seem right. Hey, I say who cares, you know? If gays want to get married and be miserable like the rest of us, I say we should let them. If LGBTQ plus people want to get hitched, let them. Many will realize marriage isn't as rosy as it's cracked up to be descending into misery along with all the straight couples bonded by the chains of matrimony. In a rare role reversal, Peter is the most open-minded person in the room. Oh, please, I'm over all that now. Two men getting married doesn't bother me in the least. They deserve happiness. Everybody gay! <laughs> Number five, life is a terrible thing. You know, it's very difficult being a parent. No, it's not. You get to do anything you want, and you get to make all the rules. Damn right I do, because I make the money. I'm the big mamu around here. Who has it worse? The kids who have to deal with the stress of schoolwork and peer pressure, or parents who need to work long hours to provide suitable living conditions for the family? By switching places, the Griffins find that none of them has it easy. I got pegged by a new form of spitball. <laughs> Hey, get up, you faker. It's just a spitball. Peter and Lois are harassed by teenagers, while Chris is overworked to the point of having a heart attack. As the family reflects on their experiences, Peter delivers a few heartfelt words. And by heartfelt, we mean painstakingly true. I guess what we all learned is that no matter who you are or where you come from, life is a terrible thing. Whether you're a kid or an adult, life is cruel to all of us, and things never get any better. It's a harsh lesson, but one that virtually any age group can identify with. Number four, ballpark food. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks are intertwined with the ballpark experience, so much so that they're mentioned in the unofficial baseball anthem. The song leaves out the grimy reality of ballpark food, however. Uh, I'll take one terrible beer filled up way too high so I spill most of it, and a too long hot dog on a too short bun. And do you have mustard and relish? Yeah, it's right there between the entrance and the exit to the bathroom. Perfect. While we'd enjoy a tall beer to go with the game, they always fill the cup up so high that spilling is inevitable. The hot dog to bun ratio is never equally proportioned. It's also safe to assume that creating a sanitary eating environment wasn't at the top of anybody's priorities. Besides, has literally anyone ever ordered a bag of peanuts outside of a ballpark? I can't wait to have diarrhea in the stall with no door while 20 guys wait for me to finish. Peter would be better off getting food from one of the trucks parked outside of the stadium. On second thought, food trucks have their drawbacks as well. You please make sure to bang your head on that low-hanging thing. What are you- ah! Oh, you spilled something. You want a napkin? Yes, please. All right, here's 40 blown by the wind. Number three, the confusing narration of How I Met Your Mother. Hi, I'm Peter. You know me from the movie Harold Kumar and Peter Go to White Castle. As you can see, I'm enjoying a White Castle burger. Why? Because I don't do drugs. Took me five minutes to get to White Castle. I didn't get diverted by all those crazy hijinks. What starts as an anti-drug ad deteriorates into a rant about Harold and Kumar, which leads to Peter rambling about How I Met Your Mother. It was a good movie, though. You know Neil Patrick Harris got the job on How I Met Your Mother because of that movie? You know, I've only seen that show once, but I gotta tell you, what's really weird to me is why is the voice of the guy from the future Bob Saget? Peter's ad doesn't make us want to say no to pot, but he does bring up some valid points about the sitcom. Josh Radner plays protagonist Ted Mosby, while Bob Saget provides narration as an older Ted reflecting on his 20s and 30s. Kids, I'm gonna tell you an incredible story. The story of how I met your mother. But Ted is already grown up, so why is another actor voicing his future self? It only gets more confusing in the finale where we see Radner on screen as a middle-aged Ted, who no longer sounds like Saget. And that, kids, is how I met your mother. That's it. That's it.
No, I don't buy it. We guessed they were going for a Wonder Years vibe, but even Peter Griffin realizes this doesn't add up. Doesn't make sense. Number two, Saran Wrap, the most frustrating invention ever. Turn that chainsaw off! Not a chance, Lois. You know how hard it was to get that thing started? It was even worse than trying to cover anything with Saran Wrap. Saran Wrap seems like a convenient tool for keeping our leftovers fresh. As Peter demonstrates in this cutaway gag, Saran Wrap is actually a burden on society. Just getting a grasp of the sticky plastic is an ordeal. It is impossible to pull out a piece while still keeping the tube in the box. No matter how hard you try to smoothly cut the plastic in a straight line, you always wind up tearing it in an unorderly fashion. Even when you finally have a piece to work with, it probably won't cover the entire plate. Peter spends over a minute wrestling with the wrap before dropping one more truth bomb. Nobody eats leftovers, but we still insist on keeping them in the fridge for weeks. Perfect. Can't wait to throw that out in two weeks. Number one, the freaking FCC. Is the playing situation. There's no negotiation with the fellas at the freaking FCC. Everybody goes to the bathroom. Most of us know all the four-lettered words, and our species would struggle to exist without procreation. So why must the FCC crack down on these facets of life? Peter fires back at the FCC with his own network and a musical number that embraces everything indecent. So they sent this little warning, they're prepared to do their worst. And they stuck it in your mailbox, hoping you could be coerced. I can think of quite another place they should have stuck it first. Eventually, Peter takes his case to Congress, pointing out that many of the country's celebrated monuments resemble instruments that the FCC is resolute on censoring. The Washington Monument looks an awful lot like a penis, doesn't it? The Capitol building? Quite obviously a giant boob. But what about all the impressionable children watching at home? Well, as Peter says in another episode, maybe parents should spend less time complaining about the shows and instead evaluate what their children watch. So if you're watching a TV show and you decide to take your values from that, you're an idiot. Maybe you should take responsibility for what values your kids are getting. Maybe you shouldn't be letting your kids watch certain shows in the first place if you have such a big problem with them, instead of blaming the shows themselves. Peter Griffin isn't afraid to tell it like it is. Nobody censors him. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.